The presence of gynoids or human-like artificial beings in pop culture sets an aesthetic and, in doing so, an existential standard. My assumption is that the female artificial being offers a complex representation of human destiny not influenced by moralism. On the one hand, the gynoids become the occasion for an insight into the condition of human existence and an implicit criticism of sex as a power strategy. On the other hand, gynoids introduce a, a stylization of desire that uh, allows uh, uh, for an increase in freedom from social and economic uh, pressures. Desire becomes a playful and liberating opportunity of exploring the possibilities and limits of uh, human uh, relationships. Gynoids uh, uh, call attention to humanity they cannot uh, reach. They are human, at least uh, uh, to some extent, uh, because they feel that something is missing in, in their life. They need uh, being recognized. In the existential perspective, the impossibility of defining the authentic human being is uh, the very essence of the human being. As uh, Heidegger and Tension Paul Sartre wrote, we are a project. It means we cannot be defined uh, like a, an object, like a, an instrument. In a similar way, uh, the uncertain and endangered humanity of a gynoid consists of her lack of human fullness and defined essence. So, gynoids are like humans. They are not, or should not be, in competition with humans. Um, for this reason, the gynoids uh, present a paradox. They are a sort of a simplified and stylized representation of the human being. In the gynoids, we can grasp the essence and contradictions of human existence. Looking at them, we can consider human issues in a different light from, uh, from the outside, with uh, fewer moral concerns. And... Uh, and moral issues are urgent. In our society, uh, the feminine body is portrayed as the primary source of women's power and the primary way to obtain power. Now, the gynoid makes it possible to question without the fear of moralism. A hedonistic and simplistic attitude which proposes sex as an innocent game and, at the same time, conceals the, possi the possible use of sex as an instrument of power. In other words, uh, the gynoid reminds us of a much more complex situation and of certain conditions and limits of enjoyment. There is something, uh, it means... Uh, uh, the full human presence, uh, the person, the individual, that cannot be completely ignored. And this is a condition, not a means uh, of full enjoyment. The gynoid limits the use of sex as an instrument of power by stating the rights of the person. The person is the condition not the means of full enjoyment. A body of a gynoid functions like a natural body without being one. It shows that uh, sexual attraction as a mate selection mechanism is no longer needed. Sexual attraction can evolve towards differentiated behaviors uh, such as uh, sociability, uh, creativity, enjoyment of art, uh, enjoyment of beauty, aesthetic appreciation, reproduction, competition for limited resources, and uh, 
women are represent limited uh, resources from the evolutionary uh, point of view and uh, social competition uh, for survival imposed by uh, this competitive mate selection are no longer the only goals of sexual attraction. For this reason, the sexual attraction can no longer support any power strategy. Thanks uh, to acceptation and not adaptation. Thanks to acceptation, desire originated art. This is a point uh, uh, developed in my study. It is interesting how in the Western pop culture, some gynoids can use uh, their attractiveness to gain power. This is the case of uh, Maria in uh, Metropolis or Eva in uh, Ex Machina. But uh, these uh, gynoids are not desirable for that. In other cases, fictional gynoids uh, suggest uh, a relationship in which attraction is not a reason for competition. Of course, uh, they are a product of consumerism, which becomes an instrument to limit the pressures of consumer society. In doing so, the fictional gynoids introduce a new experience of desire as a playful and liberating form that uh, entails an increase in freedom from social and economic pressures. This uh, liberating image of gynoids is typical of uh, Japanese and Asian cultures. The beauty of the body is uh, thanks uh, of and not despite of its uh, artificiality. Uh, in other terms, uh, a doll-like uh, appearance uh, is uh, socially reassuring. Uh, Japanese culture has developed a specific cult of cuteness in which uh, kawaii or uh, cute essentially means uh, childlike and innocent and uh, vulnerable physical appearance and uh, social behavior. Cuteness is above all about the recovery of a childlike physical, emotional and mental state. Cute or uh, kawaii hints uh, to innocence and naturalness. But actually, it is the result of a very artificial and anti-natural attitude. It is in fact extremely artificial and stylized. Cuteness is the indicator of a psychological neoteny or of a retention of a youthful or childlike attitudes and behaviors. The um, childlike attitude of a gynoid means uh, that uh, she is flexible and adaptable to a world uh, that requires a flexibility, in which definitions are not possible. Humans are much less flexible, unable to wander. Gynoids offer a more playful attitude, open to the possibilities of a new and changing world. If uh, uh, they make mistakes, and they make mistakes, hmm, they make mistakes out of innocence. This concept of beauty as a stylized uh, and uh, fully artificial uh, construct may explain the fascination with uh, artificial beings. Gynoids must share something. It is not just the right to limit resources, uh, which is what most Western gynoids aspire to, and what justifies uh, competition. Think of the case of the uh, bad robots uh, uh, in competition with uh, uh, human beings. They can also share the endangered nature of beings whose essence cannot be gr grasped by any instrumental definition. <laughs>